in a long-term relationship, you're not always going to be connected mm -hmm. hip to hip. It doesn't have to always be perfect. Yeah. As much as everyone tries to facade it and make it perfect, I love the couples that are just like, well, fuck you, well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, well, I love you. <laughs> oh, let's have sex. Yeah. <laughs> It's like that rawness, just like, okay, uh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, okay. I relate hard on that. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Hey, I'm MJ. And I'm Bree. Welcome to Keeping It Casual. A sex-positive dating and relationship advice podcast. Yes, I'm married with two kids. And I'm navigating this crazy dating world. We're just here to share our drama. And the wild stories of our listeners. Your Vegas girls are here for you. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Well, hello. Good evening. So guess where we're at right now? I think we are recording live at we're, our sponsor. That's right. So tonight we're live from the Gene Woods Racing Experience. I'm talking like electronic drifting cars. I just smoked Bree. She did. I did. But you know what? <laughs> I already threw it out into the universe that you were going to beat me before we even started. They I were was like, like, who's going to win? She's like, you. I was like, oh. I was like, competition is a dumb <laughs> uh, But There was no competition there at all. Yeah, but very cool. What a blast. Uh, they just opened their second location downtown Fremont Streets inside the Neonopolis. It's open seven days a week, 11 a.m. to midnight. And um, uh, the other one is across from Town Square, Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I know, I know exactly where that's at. Yeah. Now, now that it's like putting up light bulbs in my head, but this one downtown, you know, you could come, you could do your race, and then you can go upstairs and go to the Cat's Meow and sing some karaoke. I love it. Like, and plus we're down right off Fremont, so it's where yes. all the action is. But tonight we are so excited. We have a very, very, very special guest. She is an entrepreneur, personal trainer, fitness model, competitor, and fun fact. One uh, of the world's first podcasters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're talking like back to like maybe 2006 or seven. Please welcome Michelle, Michelle Davis. Davis. Oh, my gosh. Do we miss anything? I know there's no, more. No, I feel like uh, our number red one fan. was laid out. <laughs> You're such a renaissance babe. You are. Dun, dun, dun. Um, dun, dun, dun. So, so please, um, you know, we're, we just, we're very excited, but we want you to introduce yourself and kind of tell people like what you're into and what you're up to right now. Like, yeah. What's going on? Who are okay. you? Who is Michelle Davis? Well, hey, everybody. I'm <laughs> Michelle Davis. <laughs> and uh, people know me by... sexy voice. Oh, she thank knows. you. Thank you. Um, yeah, people know me by Roxy. Came mm -hmm. to Vegas in 08. Started mm -hmm. podcasting right away. Uh, bought my house right when everything crashed. Uh -huh. oh, bought wow. it for a great price. Was a dancer at the time. Mm -hmm. Wanted to get out of dancing. So I started a podcast that was like having the club at my house. And that's basically what it turned into. Really? Was obsessed with Howard Stern, Wayne's World. Wanted to come out and be my own identity. So I, I said, it. ladies, instead of shopping, let's come to my house, have a pool party. We'll talk about all the fucked up things the guys do <laughs> and make fun of them. Yes. And we're going to make this into our playground. And from there, we had DJs and we had model shoots and we had music videos. Oh my it gosh. was right when MySpace was coming out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I said, how can I be different? And at the same time, try and make sense of it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so while I was podcasting and we had all these crazy stories, I made sure it was like a model shoot at the same time. Then oh I brought in gosh. a band at the same time. And then we intertwined it with Ustream. And then we combined that with YouTube. And then from there, it just kind of took off, and I can I have just been rolling with it ever since. And it was called Jelly Jelly Drop Shop. Jelly Drop Shop. I started making my own burlesque clothing. Uh huh. That's oh, wow. when I found Fanny at Pole Fitness Studio. Oh, we love Fanny. We do love Fanny. And uh, <laughs> thanks to Deja Vu, they even carried my Foxy Roxy clothing line oh, in wow. their Inland Empire. So that was something I was like, look at ladies coming by my stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, talk about true entrepreneur. Right I was just here. about to say that, like finding oh, a whole. Gosh. Like how I've got all these sexy babes with incredible stories because we're in the club every night with mm -hmm. these animals. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah, oh, there's a lot more to do. Just having a sexy body is just one thing, mm -hmm. but all of the personalities that are mm -hmm. in the back end. And when you talk about taking the makeup off and just, okay, you're just the real girl with the flip flops on. Mm -hmm. There's even more intense dynamic that goes into being who mm -hmm. they are. Yeah. And I, I was like, it. oh my God, girls, we need to like, just have a ball and go with this. I love that. So it's funny cause you, we, we actually just started a new segment called, oh my God, everyone is crashing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No there's, bumping. There's a no race. Bumping. There's a race going on. We got front row seats of the race cars going yes. on. Um, yeah. So we started a new segment on this called why did i date him and it sounds like your podcast kind of went into that so do you have a why did i date him story oh gosh yeah 
Yeah. You know, and a lot of them follow me on Instagram stories nowadays. <laughs> I, I bet. See, yeah. Well, you're I'm a like, babe. Why I know. Why wouldn't they follow you? Like, I was like, man, because I am guilty. Uh, I'm not guilty, but I am an ugly duckling. That one girl that, like... Uh, I don't believe it. Uh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I was, I was uh, 160 pounds at 16, and I left high school because I had a GPA of 1.2, and I, I hated school because I didn't fit in. Mm. I didn't have... I wasn't mm. a click. And, um, Neither was I. And I went to a continuation high school, so I get the F out of school and just graduate. I found at a young age, I am not clicky. I am my own entity. Yes. I am a loner, and I love it, and I go by my own beat, and I do not follow. I, You know, I have compared myself every now, but it, who's, yeah, I'm per, I'm not perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm norm, You're I'm human. human. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I love the fact that I stand for living an unconventional life. 36, mm -hmm. not married, no kids. I love it. And mm -hmm. I was obsessed with money. And I had to get out of dancing because that was the one thing that I was so obsessed with money. I had to find what else I could do. And that's where broadcasting came in. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So a lot of the guys, why did I date him? This one guy was my true love. And I mm -hmm. left him because he loved to grow weed and he was really good at it. And mm -hmm. uh, I just said, I met you at 15. I'm 19. I'm not going to go anywhere. I just graduated college. Mm -hmm. I need to move up. Mm -hmm. I love you so much. And I broke his heart. And, and still to this day, we're very good friends. All of my exes, very close to all of my exes. I think that's good when you can be friends with an ex. That mm -hmm. shows, like, you have such a light about you. You really do, girl. Well, Thanks. And, yeah. and I, think, I think you also are just saying, why did I? date him i did love him but i had to leave him because i, I felt like him. he wasn't going anywhere he was just gonna him. be uh growing the ganj and but the other day i was like thought about it and i was like yeah i gave him thirteen thousand because he got out of he got in a bad deal and i was uh, like oh yeah that was a good reason oh yeah. man why did oh, i date man. him because i wanted to save money uh yeah i wanted to make the right decision yeah you want somebody that's gonna help you grow in what you're gonna do but mm -hmm. i find it hard to believe that you say that you're a loner and you're not clicky yeah. because women flock to you you yes, have built this this tribe of of strong confident women yes. be you're a fitness competitor and you're also a personal trainer and you like rally women weekly to go to your house and like do these incredible workouts tell us a little bit more about your your workouts on the weekends so i think it really really came down to yeah at a young age i didn't feel pretty and mm -hmm. i didn't feel like i fit in all of a sudden from bodybuilding and winning mm -hmm. has grown into this confidence that falls back into losing my sister to breast cancer mm. and we were like my fingers are crossed we were like this because she couldn't have she had cancer at 17 19 mm. and then it came back 14 years later and we oh. made a pack like she couldn't have kids and i said i'll be your surrogate she's like yeah. no i wouldn't do that no it's okay and i actually kind of decided not to have kids only because that was something we had in common like mm -hmm. i got pregnant and it was a mistake and she stopped talking to me because she had gotten diagnosed with cancer oh. so it was all of these fallbacks of yeah wow I'm there so was sorry. such a deep intense thing in me that clicked on where i don't know if you girls have ever lost someone like extremely close nothing, to you nothing nothing like but that. she never believed I she was gonna imagine. die she looked at me she said i'm not gonna die mm. i said you're not gonna die because you're gonna go in me yeah mm -hmm. she'd hold my hand she said you're gonna go in me i'm gonna carry your message mm -hmm. and she said i'm so scared I said, I'm right here with you, mm. and I'm going to remember you forever. You're going to be okay, yeah. and I'm going to see you soon. And she'd be like, I, I miss, I'm miss, i going to miss you so much. And this is with hospice being, Jeez. you know, yes. and the hospice nurse would look at her and say, what can I do for you, Christine? She said, I don't want to die. I want more time. Give me more time. Mm. Yeah. I'm not ready. Even to her dying breath, she'd look at me, and she said, I'm not ready. I'm not oh, ready. God, I'm and to cry. me, you know what? It oh, was my not heart easy. Is it took five it. hours for her to pass away because she was uh, so strong. Like all the stuff that was pumped in her. And yeah. that's one thing I don't understand. Hospice is very good. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very kind hearted business and they help you. But why can't they make it easier for people who want to just, just turn it off? Mm -hmm. Because we had to sit there and it was just the most heart wrenching yeah. gut feeling. And for me, I took her strength. And I catapulted that mm -hmm. to push myself so freaking hard in the gym mm -hmm. and behind the scenes of competing. I made all of this thriving friendship and love to all the women that are killing themselves to go backstage to, or to go in this competition. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I made that to a point where I never wanted to not say sister again. I was so afraid, like, she's my only sister. So when she's gone, am I ever going to say that's my sister? She's my sister. 
That's mm -hmm. my sister. I feel like we're sisters. We are. <laughs> Aww, we yes. are. So from now, I carry on this message, like with every woman has a certain struggle. And my willpower in life is to take any broken pieces and be that glue to put them back together. Oh, I love and that. And it doesn't matter if it's a heartbreak, like a relationship or a career change or wanting to do something new and try something new mm -hmm. or lose weight or like... Mm -hmm. If they lost a love, anything. Whatever you're struggling yeah, with. I, yeah, I I feel like I want to be that breath of fresh air that helps people get through the hard times. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I'm getting choked up. I know. I am too. Are you going to write a book? I've thought about it. My sister started writing a book when she, when it came back, she she wanted to call it Three Cancers and One Girl. Oh. And then finally when it entered in her bones, it was not, it, you know, she stopped. But it's something I've always wanted to take that and like take her journal. And in between that, I was writing a journal at the same time through her passing. Mm -hmm. And every day I would write down my emotions and what I'd mm -hmm. feel and throughout sure. that. And like, oh my God, on my way home after her memorial, someone freaking broke into my car and took all all <gasps> of her all the stuff I was not all of her stuff but all of the journals and everything I'd written and all my memories and and People some of her disgusting. belongings yeah, I know it was in Bakersfield not like it means Fucking anything but oh, I, I almost thought maybe that's a good thing they took those journals yeah. so I don't have to read all the pain I'd gone through every day yeah. but I was going to turn that into a book and I think you got that out to sometimes yeah. just to get that out that was kind of an outlet for you mm -hmm. and I think you I was can, terrified Oh, so how the hell am I going to deal with this? Like, yeah. I can't imagine. But million, everyone loses everyone. Yeah. yeah. And it's a hard fucking reality truth, but that's why you have to love. Yeah. And I don't want to be this hippie, like, spreading all love <laughs> and peace sign. But you have to be, fuck, just be kind. Yeah. Kind to yourself. Kind to others. Yes, we're going to have hard days, but those hard days make it to where we can turn around and have a good day even better yeah I, w I was just telling Bree today I said you know I have had the biggest challenges of my life this year like yeah. it's been a struggle mm -hmm. and especially lately everything's a challenge mm -hmm. it's just stress uh, you know financial up and down like I've been in the most struggle I've had in a long time I'm very uncomfortable you know I feel like you're going to be growing but the most though exactly but I told her I said I am so challenged with every aspect from my family to my kids to my work to my life but I feel fucking alive yes. every day yeah. I feel so feel like fucking alive because I'm conquering every day That's awesome. I'm struggling but I am so conquering so yeah. when I get to that next day I'm like I fucking did that and I'm still doing it and yeah. I just you know these these things that put you back man they they give you so much push and they change you and shape you in ways that you might not expect but it's up mm -hmm. to you to kind of like what am I going to do with this you know mm -hmm. and I love that you're taking such um you're just you, you're just returning this love and this strength and giving it giving it to everybody yeah for the and longest time people are like are you a personal trainer and I'm like no I just I want to have my strength sisters and mm -hmm. yeah. you know help them out because a lot of women deal with depression yes. I deal with depression mm -hmm. it's something yeah. like I am so serious to help in any way form and it's not just the exercise part mm -hmm. it's tapping into like what is holding you back what do you need to get off your chest mm -hmm. let's get you in front of some like supportive loving caring people mm -hmm. that deal with the same stuff yeah. so now I am taking on clients that are paying me a pretty good amount but mm -hmm. I have my strength sisters and I, I don't don't like to charge them mm -hmm. it's more of like you need a place a safe haven a safe haven mm -hmm. you need an environment mm -hmm. to be yourself come work out with me every sunday at 10 mm -hmm. you know and oh. i love that i, love I even remember i invited you Bree. you did but i think i was out of town that weekend or something yeah. there was something weird where i couldn't make it but yes i would love to come but i just i i want to get my work out work yes. on out with michelle and yes. so so actually uh, you something we were interested in is that like you know you've done the bodybuilding competition Mm -hmm. and the fitness modeling and I I think there's a lot of people out there that you know that although they may not have the discipline to compete or really like get into it but they would probably just love some tips on maybe some baby steps on little things they can tweak maybe their exercise mm -hmm. maybe their diet or meal planning like if somebody was just like I don't even know where to start or where to begin yeah. and do you need so me to much... regulate on these guys are they being too loud no, no they're fine, fine. Okay. they're enjoying okay. the racetrack yeah. okay I was gonna say I'll say something they're great no, they're fine you guys were at a racetrack we're at the yeah. Gene Woods Racing 
experience. Like, hey, yo. Yeah. Simmer down now. <laughs> She's going to headlock somebody in just know, a moment. <laughs> uh, when you guys come down here and you watch the instruction video, you get to see a oh. super babe in it. <laughs> yeah. Michelle's in there, like, rocking and rolling in uh, all yes. the instructional videos. She gives these, be- like, she, she's putting the uh, visor down and showing you off her beautiful eyes. All I felt was, like, it just smushed my I cheeks. I like how you like did the hair flip with that. <laughs> <laughs> hair flip. Nails uh, done. I just felt like it was yes. all my cheeks, like, smushed into my nose. And my it eyes. was. Like, it was like, this is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Gene came out while you girls were racing. It was like, let me show you how Let me show you done. how it's actually done. Uh, he yeah. jumped in and, like, Shh. lapped us both. I was like, I don't think so. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm I was not like, surprised. Uh, my foot is all the way to the <laughs> to the to the like my pedal was to the metal and it wasn't going fast and I was just like whatever I'm just gonna cruise along I know just be you Brie just be you <laughs> just I'm be like me. flying by I'm like punch it I know right you're and not I was gonna like, get away am, with this I am punching it it's just not moving <laughs> that's what I love about these go kart tracks or just the fact of the adrenaline the competitiveness yeah the fun it is fun yeah it's, I'm so like I'm competitive if we're playing like strategy games and right. stuff like you don't want to you don't want to do stuff like that with me but like here I'm like everybody else can win I'm cool I know right but like she's like, like who's gonna win I was like me she's like her I was like oh me okay oh, great I know like if we're playing pool I'm not gonna be competitive with you but if you sit me down and we're playing like Scrabble Scrabble I get very competitive <laughs> or like some sing off karaoke contest no nobody likes to play music games with me I, I think you and I like- we were, we were going to go on beaches. Eh? We, are, like, we, we were going to be music I don't think we yeah. ever actually have admitted this on the podcast. Oh, we went on. Uh, we, we, auditioned we auditioned for, for Beat Shazam yeah. as a duo. Oh, yeah. Before right before we, we just. Mm-hmm. Before we started the podcast, I think it kind of brought that. The Beat Shazam brought the magic together, honestly. Yeah. Oh. We were like, we were Is Shazam like. A tag like team. Um, they, they play like they snippets play like, of music and you have to guess the song and artist. Yeah, and you have to be like oh. the first one to clue in. And then yeah. once you're. Um, if you're like the final duo, you go up against Shazam. You girls are really good at that whole name. We were great at it. And, we were great at oh, it. Man. And they wanted to put us on but they wanted to, they were looking for pregnant chicks but but we, i was like three she, weeks from she giving was birth like too oh. pregnant yeah <laughs> and then she felt really bad and i was like no it's fine like i think i think we got this She's i think like, how pregnant are you i was like it's just you know it's it's fine oh it's fine like, yeah, like, yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> and it actually it's worked out thing. because logan came a little bit early too <laughs> like yeah like if we would have gone on beach shazam i think logan would have been born on the, like mm-hmm. by jamie fox like oh my god how he funny he would have been the shazam baby, <laughs> shazam baby. oh god but, <laughs> but uh before we get into getting to know you which we have some juicy questions yes. we also have some sexy relationship questions but you know people people that are thinking like oh my god i'd love to have the body of a fitness model like, yeah. What are a couple little things without overwhelming them with like, well, you have to do this and this. Like, th- just baby steps, starter things together. You, you know, you got to find a mentor you can vent to. That's mm-hmm. the first and foremost. Ooh, I like that. That's, mm-hmm. you know, you know, my nutritionist was just, what helped me. Yeah. I actually was just back home in San Luis Obispo. I drove back today. Yeah. And my mom and I were at the apple farm. And she's like, if you had no idea who I was and you just saw me, what would you order me? And I'm like mom oh, I need to do like a psychological evaluation of your thoughts and your background and yeah. and everything to you know to she know. wants you to give her a good healthy meal well, I know yeah. and everyone's Aww. like so so how do you how do you build muscle and I'm like um, it's, there's so much deep. It, it, taps, it taps into your biggest weakness mm-hmm. I don't care if you are an emotional eater you smoke you overly buy video games and you can't leave your house like mm-hmm. whatever your biggest weakness is that's the one thing that's gonna kick you in the ass every time you are trying to <laughs> do something clothes wow <laughs> every time i love buying clothes oh i love buying clothes but the thing <laughs> with buying clothes is like you fluctuate so often i know you have to and in vegas you have to have the winter clothes you have to have the summer clothes mm-hmm. and you have and to have the november and october and november yes. clothes when the weather doesn't know what it and is and you have to have the bloated clothes and you have <laughs> yes. to have the not bloated clothes and then you have to have the fluctuate of 10 pound jeans and then you gotta have <laughs> i'm serious it's difficult well, I, I love so much that she's saying this because fluctuate 10 pound jeans. well yes, yes. it's we, like you yes. have pound you have the jeans that fit you yeah and you're like damn but then again you have something that stresses you out and you're puffy and you have a bunch of cortisol in your system or you're on your period yep. or whatever and you mm-hmm. got off track and then you're like, I don't want to wear these jeans because they don't make me feel good. Yeah. yeah. When it comes back to your weakness, it's how you feel emotionally about mm-hmm. certain weaknesses that yeah. tap into your confidence. Mm-hmm. 
And that confidence is what is going to allow you to get in the trajectory you want to go. You know, everything emotionally comes down to how you deal with life. I think a lot of people just don't believe they can get there. That is a very true thing. I'm in a lot of, like, Facebook groups and stuff, especially about weight loss. And then I just see all these people that are like... I've hit a plateau now. I, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, it just seems just, so unattainable. You got to push yourself a little bit harder or like people come up to me all the time and they're like, well, what did you do? And I'm like, well, first and foremost, I got a nutritionist. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, you need to have the professionalism where it's at. And you that's need, why you yeah, pay for you it. Need and it you need somebody. Know. And when you're paying for it, you're going to, you know, well, and people are like, oh, it's too expensive to join a gym or it's too expensive it's to do this. $25 a month to join LBAC guys. Well, but it's the sociability and the camaraderie yeah. of yeah. having the women that make you feel good on the shitty days yeah. mm-hmm. and then the trainer that knows you well enough when they know you're in a plateau mm-hmm. that's to gonna, push you that's either going to push you or it's going to slow you down and talk to you well i've heard and someone ha- say you know. like that like oh i can't afford it and i'm like you buy starbucks three times a week and you eat out four times a week because like, it makes them feel good right exactly so but that it's like is you know what that what is it that makes you feel good yeah mm-hmm. and it's then like that costs, that costs less than a personal trainer you're and spending exactly. one week with a personal trainer but you know just little things things it's like it's a lot look of stuff you just don't want to deal with stuff you don't want to come it down in. to i competed for two years straight because i couldn't i was in so much pain about my sister that i figured okay i'm already uncomfortable i'm just going to do this mm-hmm. and it worked out pretty well now i'm not competing mm-hmm. and now i have to deal with issues that how many of us didn't get enough attention from our parents whether our mom or our dad yeah mm-hmm. and that attention whirled into some sort of i'm not good enough i'm always chasing this i need validation here i'm raising Raising my hand because I'm guilty of that. We Those are. are the things yeah. that I'm yeah. like trying to let go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to shed off all of the stuff that has held me back, curbing it or numbing it or suppressing it. That's only going to do it. And it catches up and you're like, oh shit, all these years have gone by and I've just been numbing myself. I haven't faced it. Yeah. And I mean, it's not necessarily like, like that's a very like Al- Alcoholics Anonymous thing mm-hmm. to say. Like, I know you don't drink, but like you used fitness as a way to numb it. And which mm-hmm. some people are like, oh, that's great. Look at how good your body's in shape and this and that. But still, it's like you can't just take up your feelings and scoop them and you know or a lot of people are codependent you know codependency or yeah so i just think like tapping into what you uh, use to Mm -hmm. mask your yeah my my Ah, ex pointed something out to me that i actually do even though we don't like him obviously but one time we were fighting and he looked at me and he i said something to him i was like you are making me a fucking insane person and this is not who i am and he said but you don't ever want to feel your feelings and i went (laughs) No, I don't. But that's beside the point. Yeah. Because <laughs> remember when you were saying, you said, like, I will take on anybody's problems but my own. I will. I will own. take on anybody's yeah, problems but my own. because that's where the real deep feelings yep. lie. And unfortunately, like, I found I got to sit by myself and I got to deal with this and I got to write it out mm-hmm. and I have to sit by myself. I don't want anything around me and I want to get it off and whatever it is. What do you find that you use that you've been, as you've been trying to, like, you realize, like, fitness, just diving, like, mm-hmm. intensely into fitness? Like, what do you what do you think that you're kind of using now? So, is yeah, working you? out excessively now. My knees hurt and I got to rest and stuff. Mm-hmm. So now my emotions are hitting me harder and yeah. I'm having to deal with that. So I found a counselor mm-hmm. that Good. my doctor approved. And it's still for the grieving of my sister yeah. and having to find that healthy yeah. way to channel it in. And I've really looked at maybe possibly getting my yoga instructing uh, mm-hmm. oh. certification yes. to That'd channel in that peace and that calm that I need to, to have in my life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and come do some hot yoga with me. I love hot I yoga. Love, I feel like I it like hot gets yoga, you in the zone and you're like, Ugh. There's something <laughs> about it. Like, my face turns bright. Me too. The red. teachers are like, are you okay? I'm and like, it, I'm and fine. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I live close to Main Street, so Sin City Yoga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have like a certification I want to go check out. You have, nice. um, you have naturally red undertone in your skin, though. That's why your skin turns so red. You ah. do too. Same. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a very warm. Would you to see my mom she's like very pale skinned and she's bright pink constantly yeah, me yeah well you're very pale but you have a more of a cool undertone no so i have cool well tone. i have rosacea i have red 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 skin i just mm. cover it up with the right foundation mm. you would never know mm. <laughs> but you look fantastic by the way oh thank you oh yes i kind of fell off the wagon i'm g- gonna be honest with you guys i lived off of like alcohol and halloween candy for about five days <laughs> okay. so. that is all good. and you know what it's okay that's about like we, we sometimes we do that you know it's up and down and i like earlier when you said like we fluctuate because we yeah, had another we had another fitness 
fitness professional on and she was like you know my body changes every day and it was yeah. just so refreshing to hear that because sometimes you're like i was weighing this yesterday i try to stay off the scale i go with my oh, jeans I stay i'm in fanya told me i had to stay off the scale remember stay that yeah that fanya was evil. like that's what she, fanya said she, she looked at me and she said you stay off the scale she said because mm -hmm. that's what's stopping you right now i, I go to uh mm -hmm. dexafit mm -hmm. dexafit las vegas my good friend mm -hmm. juan she is a retired pharmaceutical uh pharmacist mm -hmm. and dexafit tells you your visceral and subcutaneous fat your bone density oh. everything that you need to know on like a five or six page report just lay on a bed scanning it like this little scan machine goes over you really it takes about three minutes is it like one of those tests they do now like you know you can find out what your blood type is and eating for your no, blood type and things uh, your your bones your lean muscle mass, your visceral and subcutaneous fat, but they do have the metabolic testing. They have the 3D scanning. Oh, wow. Um, they have like all sorts of testing. Very cool. So, yeah. so much better than when you look at those, uh, those, I hate those body charts that are like, look at your weight versus your height. And oh, God. It, Cause it's like, for me, I'm five one. If you look at that chart, they want me at like 95 pounds. I would look like Nicole no. Richie when she was on cocaine. <laughs> at oh <laughs> That's what I would look like at 95 and pounds. I mean, I think you should write a book about your fitness journey because oh. you look so good Thank from where you, you like you are <laughs> dead. You. You, I mean, if there's like a $50,000 American biggest loser contest <laughs> and I see it coming up girl like I just I was so quiet about it that's what I needed to do was be quiet about it because working in an office setting if you were like walking around like oh my diet my diet my diet uh, the second you bring in and out in one day because you want you know in and out you want in and out and you're allowed to have it people are like well that's not in your diet oh yeah. that's what yep. used to always get to me and so I just kept quiet we would eat mm -hmm. our we would have our salads at lunch we did salads every day we were like every day i'm still our... on the salad bandwagon actually okay. i made soup this week though yeah. i made that soup i brought you with veggies and, fr yeah. and, and fruit yeah. ew no i mean veggies and chicken and stuff yeah, yeah, the yeah I, I, I brought i brought her uh like i brought her soup to work one night yeah. she did <laughs> so it was i had to go pick something up and i was like I, I have some soup do you want some and she was like yes <laughs> so I, cool. I, I full disclose <laughs> i ate it cold and it was still amazing it was chicken tortilla soup yeah. i'm actually because really i did not want to stink up the whole something. studio while the girls are pole dancing and they're <laughs> like hello I smell this chicken tortilla soup and now I need to eat. <laughs> and so I, was like, I was like, here's the cheese to put on it. Here's the tortilla chips. Here you go. You I made so it all cute. happen. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Girls are so adorable. So, okay, yeah. that's funny then because you, you brought up you ate it cold. Do you have like a weird food that like people would like turn down? <laughs> like I love frozen taquitos. You know, like food that you love and you're like, people are like, ew, like gross. <laughs> like my best, one of my best friends, she eats SpaghettiOs cold, like from the can. And I, I think have it's done disgusting. That. I have done that. <laughs> You know, I can throw in uh, plain fish and potatoes in an air fryer and eat it plain like that. Oh, I can eat uh, egg whites on the drop of a hat, just like okay. bloop. And um, I'm obsessed with eating nuts. Oh, I love. See, but that I, like that's all yummy stuff. I'm I know. Like, okay I know. With that. I, but it's like I don't think I. You don't eat like eat like I beef love ravioli. <laughs> Shut up. She's making fun I of me. I like cold pizza, though. <laughs> no, that no. The, the, which one? I do like cold pizza. Cold pizza. Okay. okay cold, cold pizza. Yeah. That's a, that's a hit like or miss. That. You put ranch on your pizza. That's a very West Ooh, Coast the thing. white sauce pizza. Oh. oh. See, I don't like Alfredo yes. sauce. Ooh, no, yeah. I don't, I'm not at Alfredo. But yeah, there's something about ranch sauce with cold pizza. Oh. It's really good. Yes. Interesting. But the thing, I like white sauce or Alfredo sauce, I used to like it. <laughs> this is just me being the weird, picky person that I am. I saw the jarred Alfredo sauce mm -hmm one time in the store and it looked so gross to me and it made me want to gag so i was like i'm never eating alfredo sauce again <laughs> and i have not dude one of my one of my favorite meals it's totally it stinks up the whole house it is like my father thinks it's gross me and my mom enjoy it but nobody else will eat it it's like boneless skinless sardines with onions and tomatoes and you just cook it all up and oh, with rice good. it's good and that garlic you can eat it with I me we will stink up the sardines. house together maybe uh, anchovies but Okay. I know. It's like I'll, lately I've been eating fish with mustard fish. and relish. I make a really good salmon <laughs> burger. I mash it with, up. I that make a, good. a really good it, salmon burger it almost that like way. Tuna salad. I mean, it's just I'm, like regular cooked fish. Yeah, just any cooked fish I, with I'm mustard down. and relish. So that's that's the way I make my salmon burger. Some of our I weird like, foods. I um, you, you know, you you take the salmon and you mash it up kind of like tuna. Yeah. And then you put 
Dijon mustard. Okay. And chopped red onions. Okay. And then you make the patty and then you grill it. Oh, that's It is so good. fucking delicious. Okay. Salmon right. burgers, guys. I think I think anything canned or fish, people are, have a, a way. They have issues about some stuff. So, I had sushi uh, for lunch and funny. life was great. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to get into sexy sessions? Yeah, let's we'll get into sexy. Because that was, that was a good getting to know you. Okay. Our next little segment is our sexy sessions Ooh. for being in a relationship. Oh. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you're in a relationship and, you know, it's hard to keep those things popping and keeping them moving this and growing and going. This is actually a fun going. dynamic because you're long-term married, you're in a long-term mm-hmm. relationship, and I'm single. This I know. is a good dynamic we yeah. got at the table I, right I now. I want to hear the single. We, so we're all going to pipe in on okay. our, our thoughts yeah. on these two. But first of all, how long have you been in your relationship? Almost 10 years. 10 years. Mm-hmm. So you and Jean. And yes, Jean Woods is her man. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The ra- and he's a, race, he's a racer. Like, yeah, he's done. He was Kawasaki's almost first test rider, uh, taco mini bike. Oh, wow. Speed. Speedway, sprint cars, NASCAR, monster trucks. Wow. He's raced everything. I, I had no idea he was like so into racing and He's stuff. That's so, so cool. so into racing. Well, Him that's and why. His brother both. It's like a legendary story. Okay. That's awesome. It's very cool. The Gene Woods racing experience, Neonopolis. That's mm-hmm. where we're at. It, right was, now. it was totally worth it every second on that <laughs> race track. I'll fill you in the speedway bikes like if you look behind you with mm-hmm. the spikes those are what they race on ice oh wow so they literally go sideways when they turn <laughs> fucking yeah, motorcycles go, on ice oh good god this is even better they go over 100 miles an hour and they have no brakes <laughs> No brakes. You see the steel boot that's up there? Not the steel boot on the wall? That's what they stop their bike with. That's not terrifying A steel at all. boot. That's just not a bronzed boot? It's actually well, they like... they bronzed a, it, but okay. it's, like a, it's a boot. It's like the like bronze baby boot? Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> They actually just like sprayed it colored. They, wow. It was, All damn. Right. Yeah, and those are his uh, three time national championship. That's wins awesome. For Speedway. He was Monster Energy's first uh, sponsored athlete. Monster Energy. Monster. No, get this. So damn. when Monster Energy first came out, right? Little mm-hmm. tiny company, he had the choice of either taking stock or cash and products. <laughs> He took cash and product. <laughs> That's such a man thing. The monster's very fruity. There's his yeah, NASCAR I see hood, it. and yeah, and I'm like, oh, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you should have took stock. He's That's doing funny. fine though. Yeah, yeah he he's is. doing yeah. fine. He's okay, doing so great. we're gonna we're gonna ask some relationship questions because yeah. obviously you know what you're doing if you've been in one for ten years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's go. We're we kick it off. Okay, so what is one of the most important things to you in a relationship? Uh, having good synergy, having that balance. Oh, I love that. Yes, I ask. Chris that question earlier and it was the same thing that I thought of. You don't even have to say a word. Yeah. You already know. Really? Like the level of where they're at, how was your day, don't even have to say anything. It's like that energy. It's an example of that. When I'm high tense and just, you know, my world is a mess. He's the one thing that's my rock Mm -hmm. without even having to say anything, just laying there Mm -hmm. on the couch. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, he just knows that like you need a good cuddle right now oh, yeah. because you're like, not you feeling well. Like you just lay in the that. jacuzzi or the bath together, and you don't mm-hmm. even say a word. And you know, it's just like you have this release where you're just like, I am so calm around you, and mm-hmm. you don't even have to say a word. Oh. It's better yet, you say, don't say a word. Just, just. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> sh- 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 just don't, don't smear right. my lips. <laughs> what about you, Brie? What would be trust? Mm. Me too. Yeah. And that's exactly what Chris said. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. I go, well, what's the second thing? He's like, likability. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's trust. And then and then I think my second thing would be the synergy. Like, I love spending quality time with my partner that doesn't have to be us, like, gazing into each other's eyes. Like, he could be playing a video game and I'm reading a book, but we're still in the moment mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Yep. To me, yeah. that's how I know something, that you have something special. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I understand that part of, like, being calm because I'm kind of a special and Chris is like babe just chill out like honestly yeah. Brie can be like that for me too I love it I'm like oh my god but this and this is she's like but this and this isn't important right now just this and I'm like mm-hmm. you're right we just focus on this, this but, is- <laughs> but, but we balance each other out that way like that too because there was one time I was putting when I was doing our merch store <laughs> I spazzed I was like yeah. I can't get anything done and she was like it starts to get tedious she was a lot. like she was like but we haven't launched it yet so nobody knows about it so calm down and right. I was like oh well, I have all the time in the world to do this right now and I'm like I'm like I'm telling myself I have to get this done by Tuesday even yeah. though I don't have to get it done by Tuesday yeah. <laughs> just someone to remind you to slow down and it's yeah. okay I love that I love that okay all right next one let's see what we got so being in a long-term relationship what's little things that you do when you notice like you're not connecting 
because it happens. Mm. Yes. Kind of reconnect or just something you're like, oh, to re- right. okay. Yeah. Um, I, I put things aside to make sure that I, I put that time in, you know, yeah. like yeah. I'll brush aside everything that, okay, if it's making money and it's work, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But everything else is secondary because it's a relationship is a job. Yeah. And I'm not saying like you got to <laughs> go clock in nine to five, but it takes so much work yes it does. and sacrifice mm-hmm. and energy to first off love yourself in order to love someone else enough to not have to change yeah. them oh yeah and when you said trust i was like yeah trust yourself yeah because i think a lot of us look for that other person to complete us and whole make us whole mm-hmm. and whoopi goldberg wrote this great book the book is called if you meet someone that says you complete me turn around and run away oh. or something like that that's the name of the book because it's all a facade and a fantasy and bs of that happily ever after and every family is dysfunctional and has yes. secrets cobwebs in the closet mm-hmm. and as much as everyone tries to facade it and make it perfect i love the couples that are just like well fuck you well fuck you <laughs> i love you well, i love you oh, let's have sex yeah <laughs> It's like that rawness, just like, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. okay. I relate hard on that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you said that. You're like, push it aside. Like, oh, hone in. Too. Because when you're trying to balance everything in a relationship, you're trying to balance work and kids and your mm-hmm. your hobbies and your passions and yourself. You know, you got to take care of yourself. That's one thing when I realize, honestly, when we're not connecting, I'm like, all right, I have to check in with myself first. And I got to say, like, where am I? What what's What's going on with me? Because if we're not connecting, then I am have to blame. You know right. what I mean? So right. I check in with myself. And then, um, and then I kind of check it with him. My man is not down with deep conversations about like no, let's not talk about our feelings. Um, yeah. But he little this is why Chris and I get along. Yeah, little things to let him know that like I'm here for you. People are having fun over here. Yeah, they Thank can you. have fun. I love it. They're First on- place. <laughs> We got three kids on the stand. You know, I just have to check in with him and be like, you know, let him know that I'm here for you and mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to make myself available because yeah. it's hard. And I think it's also like being vulnerable and and not being afraid to. Gene does not do the things like I'm not going to kiss your ass, but then I'll turn around and say you you are amazing, you are incredible, you. Uh, you know, like I will say the things and he's like, you're kissing my ass. I'm like, no, I'm not. That's just me. <laughs> I just like making you feel good. Okay. So yes. you say he's saying that kiss your ass or whatever, but it seems like one of your love languages is words of affirmation. It's something that you yes. like to give. Yes. I love making people feel good about themselves. Oh, yes. And I, I have no problem at all complimenting someone. Mm-hmm. I know you make me even blush every time I see you. I was going to say, even <laughs> if it's a woman and I'm like, yeah. I love your makeup yeah or girl your ass is banging yeah i love complimenting girls like that too yeah and it's like okay i hope you didn't take that the wrong way i'm just gonna walk away i don't be me nah i don't know i think i think females are much more open to stuff like that Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna walk up to a random dude i don't know and be like i want to see your dick (laughs) your ass is fine he's like you want my number or what (laughs) no i'm just giving you props but that's what leanne (laughs) says we need to do though she said you walk up to a guy and say i appreciate the suit you're wearing yeah she was like i need a good tip to like just approach somebody in the wild and she's yeah. like just walk up to him so let's say you're looking good today no just walk away no and just leave it there and, and just see leave it there like, and let them linger right <laughs> i guess i should have done that earlier i really like your handshake <laughs> oh boy yeah mj's trying to find me a new boyfriend guys no we were running late because we had a meeting uh prior to this and yeah. um i hate running late because it's just just yeah. being a dick and disrespecting yes. time but um there was a very uh, cool, attractive gentleman. Very cool gentleman we were meeting with. Cool, very yeah, cool, very cool, very attractive, and all that stuff. So I did my smooth, hey. smooth, suave. We were Match in a business maker, meeting. Yeah. Well, I did a very suave, like wing woman thing, and I was just like, "This." We were talking about something about him not having social media, and I'm like, "So what do you think about your girlfriend with what, it? What is your girlfriend? Is she taking pictures of you and not and not posting?" He goes, "No, I, well, I'm single, by the way." And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> "I did that for my girl." Hey, there you. <laughs> Go. Just to casually like that get works. some juice on him, like I. Uh, Girl, he so had very subtle. He so had some friends. some BDE if there ever was any, and his hands were huge. Yeah. I was just like, love it. Big dick energy. He did have some BDE. Okay, mm. but um, <laughs> yeah. So wh- I, I I mean something I, I I don't really have I when I'm when I've not connected with partners I 
this is probably really bad, but I use sex as a trick to reconnect. I'm like, okay, we're not connecting, so we're going to have sex right now. That's going to fix it. Sometimes it does. And it does. No, it, it truly does. <laughs> for the does. men that don't like to communicate, yeah. Yeah. But That's you know me what? being available what if, what for them. What if it's the other way around? Mm. What if you were to reconnect with your friend by not having sex and having to put that aside? And Oh, like a friend friend. I'm no, just talking like, about. Like, for instance, what if your better half is going through a little bit of a funk? Mm-hmm. Mm. And you can't connect and through sex. And you cannot connect through sex. Oh. And you're in a long-term relationship. I haven't had that problem. Or a short-term mm. relationship. What do you do? You have to find that friend in you mm-hmm. yeah. that mm-hmm. actually is supportive yeah. and goes above and beyond. See, so my love you know. language is physical touch. So mm-hmm. I do like, I'll do like a massage, mm-hmm. like just a little neck massage. Hey, right. you want to tell me what's wrong? Right. And then you're like, and, and we've talked about love languages before. And sometimes you just give your love language mm-hmm. and they're like, not, they're like, all right, but it's not really speaking to my, speaking to my language. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not really connecting. Do you know, do you know jeans? I do. Yeah. Yeah. So do you find ways to like, well, that's actually our next question is um, what's a way that he speaks to you in your love language? (laughs) <laughs> that's hard. I just like, think about that for yeah, a bit. just okay. So like, like um, you know, when I'm stressed and the kids are driving me bonkers okay. and like I'm trying to do everything and be super mom, I'm trying to clean the house and and not yell at them and make them dinners and stuff. He'll just come home after working all day and and he'll look at me and I'm just like. He's just like, um, he'll just go into mode and he's like, I'm going to make this for dinner and just like yeah. take something off of my plate that he knows, like I, I still have this, this and this to do. And he just like does something mm-hmm. that just takes things off my or, plate. Or and he'll look at her and just be like, go take a night, a hot yoga yeah. class tonight. Yeah. Like go, go or just go in the room and chill out or something. Yeah. My guy's nonchalant. If, yeah. If there's yeah. certain things that I need to, like I, I needed to go back home and see my family. He's mm-hmm. like, I'll take care of the pets. You go yeah. relax. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, he's very, very supportive in that way. He's mm-hmm. kind of just lets me do my thing, you know. That's definitely but something. at the same time, bodybuilding, there was a point where I was putting too much into myself. And I saw that. And not enough into the relationship. And he got so into his go-kart track and fixing mm-hmm. up the house that I realized, I said, wait, we're, we're living separate lives here for a second. Yeah. Here. And that's when I had to put aside bodybuilding and I had to put aside broadcasting Mm -hmm. and I had to focus on us going out to dinner and us going out to movies and taking little road trips and stuff like that because I'm like okay I have a little more confidence and I've gotten through my hump in life Mm -hmm. and certain areas you connect and then there's certain Mm -hmm. areas where you got to let go and have each other have your back and you have space Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah I think the love language it always it's always there but there's certain times that you have it more than others Mm -hmm. yeah I love being on vacation. I don't know what it is about a hotel room. I get so horny in a hotel Girl, room. So we gotta clean up the mess. I, the minute I take my guy on a road trip, I'm like, it's on. You know what it is? Hotel rooms are very secretive. Oh, mm-hmm. Like all the mysteries that go on in it. You, know, you never know what the person next door is doing. They could be having hot sex. They could be reading a book. I was. Okay. They could be watching writing. TV. They could be watching TV. They so could now, be this writing mor- the next number one movie. So you just, funny. That's what I love about hotel. Tells you never know what's going on right next door. I am kind of a voyeur. Yeah. I am too. Morning, this morning I woke up and I had to drive back to California and uh-huh. I woke up, it's four in the morning and I hear a... <laughs> just like... Should I put my ear up to it and listen? <laughs> like, what's going on? I have this, like, weird fantasy that, like, I'm in a hotel room with my guy and somebody's listening in on us and, like, gets themselves off from it. Dude, I don't know what it Isn't is. Isn't that hot? It is so <laughs> like, like, you should have like, seen oh, MJ's yeah. face just now. She was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I love, I love, like, um, I, like to know somebody's watching us like i'm more uh, exhibitionist but like uh-huh. i can't see them like yeah. i want like like we're in hotels you know i'm like and it's like open the window you watch yeah. sliver let's go to this <laughs> like, you know, you're not at home you're in another yeah, area yeah. and it's like okay let's go I'm, fuck on the balcony yeah it's like, <laughs> I, right, like what no. else are gonna do? I know what we're gonna do i'm like yes you will get over here <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that too like balconies <laughs> getting them get, get every you and your significant other out of your element mm-hmm. uh-huh. in another environment Huge. and it's like it all comes back it oh, does yeah, definitely that's a great reconnection yeah. it is for sure and i love how vegas has so many little mini areas you can go to mesquite perum mm-hmm. yeah gene red rock 
uh, Blue Diamond, you name it. There's so many places you can go to. Honestly, oh, yeah. like you could just get like a Staycation hotel tonight. City. Exactly. Just get a cheap hotel on the strip on a Tuesday night yep. and be like, you know what, let's go bang at the Venetian. I got yep, us this badass like, suite and we, it has a big tub. We went to the Golden Nugget and it was great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you'd be like, let's go to the Golden Nugget. Let's go have some fun. Let's go go kart racing. Let's yeah. do something yep. silly and yep. fun and remind ourselves we can be kids. And All we right. have to put those things on our head. I, I love <laughs> dressing up for a show and then having the hotel room to go back to. And then, like, yes. you have lingerie on. Oh. And- just you know, putting that on underneath just, and yeah, knowing all night gives like, you a confidence. Yeah, you're like, I'm going to fuck you up. Gives you, gives you, what is it? Let's see, there's big titty energy, there's big dick energy. Was that just like pussy energy? Pussy and power? All the pussy video power. arcades that are it's here. Pussy the, power. Uh, the adult video <laughs> arcades. My big thing is like, like, I know, I don't know what it is about feeling my sexiest. It's like once I've gotten like waxed or I like use my new uh, magic uh, <laughs> my, my new stuff um, once there's no hair down there I'm like I'm at my hottest and everybody can handle this right now. <laughs> you guys I think the episode title has just come to me. We always name the episode title after a guest Pop that pussy. Come to me. I like that <laughs> Feeling myself Feeling myself, feeling myself. Yes. I'm feeling my feeling my feeling my That's What are you right. feeling? Are you feeling it? Oh, I'm feeling all the way. Alright mm-hmm. all right. We got the episode title No way <laughs> I think we get wait, Let's get into our self-love rapid fire Let's next. do it Alright mm-hmm. so, Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay So you, you, you're a lot about self-love So we, we kind of curated this self-love rapid fire So it's just a quick okay. Quick answers okay. right and, now And it's just make, basically like uh, We're talking about this week Because baby steps with everything right? Mm-hmm. Uh, things to be mindful of when mm-hmm. you know so okay you want to kick it off yes when it comes to my partner or my family i want to be better for them in this way being truthful Ooh, mm. i like that more present i like that more patient yes. <laughs> especially Ooh. with the parents i was yeah i was just thinking my mom that's like the kids mom, ain't even my, that's yeah. my mom said you are gonna get so annoyed oh. with me my mom. I tend to not be very present and it, when I'm with my family. I'll be like on my phone, doing something else, doing this. So mm-hmm. I want to be more present. I'm always trying okay. to please everybody else and mm-hmm. not speak my truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that that's one thing that I really am putting my foot down and like saying what's yeah. up. It takes a lot yeah. to feel like, oh, am I going to hurt them? Or gonna, you know, but it, then it also sets like a... a okay, so for instance, standard. I came home uh-huh. mm-hmm. and I didn't tell my dad I was home. I felt so freaking guilty. But you know what? I have decided that it's one or the other Mm -hmm. because both is so overwhelming on me. Like I literally cannot enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. It is so, you know, those divorced parent issues. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Divide and spend time and then they get jealous and then they give you shit and it's like, okay, this is just too much. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like having to be truthful. Yeah. Yeah. And they need to, they need, and they'll start respecting those standards. Like, Hey, I spending time with my mom, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm spending Mm -hmm. time with dad, you know, that's, Mm -hmm. that's gotta be Mm -hmm. something that's real hard to pull apart. So not being half ass. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that too. Okay. All right. So when a stranger pisses me off, I'm going to be mindful to just walk away. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, they're probably having a bad day. Yeah. Just being compassionate. Sometimes people get so frustrated and irritated and yeah. you're just like, you want to snap at them and it's easy to, and all of a sudden you show them kindness and you watch them just right. step back for a second and their yeah. well, attitude I mean, changes looked, a bit. I mean, if someone was rude to me and looked at me and said, well, fuck you, I'd just oh. walk away or something. I oh, yeah. I'm sure how rude. Instead of punching them in the face. Yeah. But being the better Oof. person is so, so much taking the higher road. It's so hard to take the higher road. I have been like on this journey of taking the higher road throughout this entire fucking year and let me tell you there it's, it's so hard it's more of a roller coaster it road it really is but I'm still there are moments where you're just like <laughs> it's beneficial though it's a yeah. it's a roller coaster up high road there, there there are so many mo- times when i'm like i could be so petty right now and then it's like but i'm not going to mm. i think it's you're just allowing yourself to just let it go yeah mm-hmm. and flow with it instead of gravitating towards it and yeah. pulling it in and adding yeah. more grease of the fire exactly letting them like amp you up we always encourage like everybody you know listening to like the self-love challenges yeah. for you too as well so take these things into consideration because mm-hmm. these are supposed to inspire your week and you know just make you f- just make life better you know um go for it when i fuck up i will remind myself that we all fuck up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that tomorrow's a new day mm-hmm. yeah that it's not uh 
you're going to fuck up again tomorrow, probably. Yep. And to roll with it. Yep. Roll with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love how you say roll with it. Like, do R- not. Roll out of it. Yeah. <laughs> don't linger in it. Just let it go. And oh. it's so hard to not linger in it. I can like, I know. Linger. We're sitting here saying that, and people probably are listening like, but what? And it's like, we Could've understand, guys. Would've. You have Could've to would've. let it linger. You cannot change the past. I, I make it a point to not stress on things I can't change. But they will linger. And they that's still stressing on yeah. it. Well, yeah, and it's like Why when, when you stress you about change? the past, and this is something that I do. It's like, well, I could have done this differently in this situation, and the outcome would have been different, mm. and I would be here, and th- oh. this wouldn't have happened. And it's I like, always look at it like you're always mm. going to be where you're at right now because of that particular exactly. situation. Exactly, and you know yeah. what's funny is I yeah. tell myself that, but then like, yeah. I get so like caught up in like, well, if I would have told Ginny in the third grade, like, you know what I mean? Like, just weird anxiety <laughs> yeah. stuff that comes yeah. on. Like, if I would have done this this way, it would have been better, and the outcome would have been better, and I would be here, and I would, you know, wouldn't be here. And it's so like, I always but look I actually at, like where I'm at. So. Yeah. I look at situations like that when you try and analyze and control, mm-hmm. and I always go deep into quantum physics. Like, when oh. you try and look at situations and analyze them, it's never going to, it's almost going to be worse off yeah. rather than... They say when you look at an at- when you try and look at atoms together, they dissipate. Mm. But when you let them go and you stop analyzing them, they come closer together. Mm. So it's the same thing in control that they say when you let go of control, actually more good things will happen to you. When you try and put things into control and you try and just everything's got to be perfect, it's going to actually sabotage you sabot- exactly yeah Girl, yep. this is my struggle daily like, yeah. <laughs> control and just trying to make everything perfect and run smoothly and yeah fucking up and being like it's okay all right that happened now now it's the next move yeah. you know yep. Ooh, that's yep. a tough one for me oh damn this is, this is an episode oh, that was real. we're feeling it oh yes we is okay um when i realize i was wrong i will think twice admit it because i'm terrible at admitting when i was wrong when i'm wrong uh, yeah, yeah uh, apologize apologizing and owning up and just immediately instead of just wondering like can i get away with it should i say something it's just like immediately just i fucked up i was wrong about this and you know what i, th- I find a lot of value in that if people would yeah. like do that to me and then they were to come to me and it's like oh well, I really appreciate that. And you know what? I went wrong on this way, so that's yeah. probably where the miscommunication or yeah. whatever the fuck. But yeah. yeah, yeah, it's hard to do that. It it really is. Yeah. And I would say like think twice is have a plan A, plan B. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if that's something true. doesn't go to this way, yeah. always have a, a route that you're gonna also like go with the flow and yeah, learn from it. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Something new I will push myself to try this week. There's a coconut ice cream I want to try. Mm. It's called Nadamu. That sounds good. It yeah. sounds non-dairy. Yeah, I, wanna, there's, I don't know. I'm oh wait, tr- it's coconut. F- yeah. Fania has gotten me to try vegan, being vegan. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I've been trying that, and it's been really good for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now that I'm I'm relaxing, and they call it a bulking phase, but you know, I don't put on all the pounds and stuff. I just kind of go in moderation. Yeah. yeah. So I love the vegan part of it, but it's something I'm trying, and I'm gonna see how it mm. works. Okay. Yeah. Oh, going vegan. Go ahead, Brie. What do you think? Something I will knew I will push myself to this week. Um, I got to find a new roommate this week, so that's something oh, new I'm going to yeah. push myself to do. Are uh, you guys uh, looking hey. for a fabulous, cool, and fun, and flirty girl? Girl roommate. Girl. No kids. Yeah. No we don't pets. need your kids. Um, I'm okay with pets. Well, you got dogs, though. I have dogs, so you got to yeah. be okay with dogs. No cats. <laughs> um, I can I can handle a cat. Depends. How's your cat gonna get along? Yeah. Cat? How's your cat gonna get along with my dogs? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna push myself to try taking some pole dance classes, which I've got my tricks, but I'm yeah. I'm teaching more now. So mm-hmm. I'm teaching my lap dance, my striptease workout, just lap dance, pole dance. So I'm gonna try to like take other people's classes where I'm like, I don't want to learn any new tricks, but <laughs> it's good to. Yeah. Learn to push myself a little more just to kind of tighten up my she skills. Wants to teach, yeah. She wants to teach the old dog new tricks. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I'll do that. Last one. One small thing I will continue to work on this week. Not thinking too deeply about the past. Mm-hmm. Letting things go. Forgiveness. Ooh, yeah. I, I, need, I have a lot of things I got to start forgiving, bro. Okay, and I like what you said earlier, just being present. Mm-hmm. You know, I, f- I find that the most present I am usually is on the podcast. Like, just being, like, here mm-hmm. and having these intimate conversations because it's so hard to have a good conversation with somebody sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Usually if I'm talking on the phone and I'm driving, I'm really in it. 
too but yeah one-on-one sometimes face to face you're just yeah. like well yeah you have the voice you're so you have the eyes looking yeah and everyone is connected on the conversation yeah. yeah being present is tough it is life is a gift that's why they call it the present <sighs> i love that oh. Oh. Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, MJ. Uh, <laughs> this was amazing. Thank yes. you so much for giving us your time. Um, this, I think this was just a powerful, a respectful. I mean, we, yeah. we love talking about sex and relationships, and I think this one leaned more towards relationships, and a lot of self-love is so yeah. important to us as well. Just like reminding yourself, like, life isn't all about this or that. There has to be a balance, and I love I think this this episode gave us a nice balance of yep. it did. Of and you know, but stuff you know we love to get into. Michelle said it. You cannot love somebody if you don't love yourself first. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is. The, I think that's the point of this episode. Love yourself. And I first. do think in a long feeling term, yourself. In a, feeling yourself. <laughs> feeling of course, absolutely. Feeling myself. And I do think like in a long term relationship, you're not always going to be connected mm-hmm. hip to hip. Mm-hmm. You're going to have times God. when you want one kill person is like really having a hard time, or the other person's really struggling, and it's like you got to at least put your ego and yourself aside and say this. Yeah. Yeah. Person really just needs me for a friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm their companion, mm-hmm. and I care about them enough to say it doesn't have to always be perfect. Yeah, you know, like there's just a, letting it be. Mm-hmm. There's this know? this thing that I have when it comes to relationships. It's like the person that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Yes, it's like you want the hot sex and you want this and you want that, but they, you also want it that to be the person that you're going to play bingo with when you're 80 years old. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Hell yeah! I always, I, I always say like the bingo partner. That's what you want in life. Yeah, yeah it's that. It's like that warm, fuzzy blanket. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, you, I don't know that smell of that companion. Mm-hmm. You smell them, and you're like, I like their smell. Someone that just looks like, like a shitty day, and they're mm-hmm. just like. Yeah. You need a hug? You're like, I do. Yeah. I need a hug. That yeah. hug just fixes it all. Oh, yes. Yeah. A yeah. good hug. All right. Well, it's well, getting loud in here. It I is. think you need to give your socials yes. out. We need to know. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you and yeah. just, you know, um, be inspired by you. Uh, MichelleDavisFitness.com. Okay. All around the board, just Michelle Davis Fitness. Instagram. I have a good support uh, group on Facebook. I have my sassy boot camps at my house every Saturday and Sunday mm-hmm. at 10 a.m. Yes. Okay. You're coming to Vegas or if yeah, you're in Vegas. MichelleDavisFitness.com. Yeah. Find All right, you guys. Can go be a part of it. Thank Until you so much for time. having me on Thanks the show. Thanks for so being much. I've been looking forward to this for so long. <laughs> I love it. No, we, we love it. We've definitely yes. been looking forward to so. Yes. All right. Let's, uh, until next time. Until Bye. next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, good times. We hope you related. If so, let us feature you. Email us at feedback at keepingitcasualpodcast.com or show you're a keeper on Facebook. Like the Keeping It Casual page and join the group. Yes, bonus. If you rate and review on Apple Podcasts, you get into our monthly Keeping It Casual swag giveaway. It's the last Wednesday of every month. More hookups when you share us on your Instagram stories mm-hmm. at Keeping It Casual Podcast. That's right. Find me anywhere socially at MJ Radio Diva. And I'm everywhere at at Bremixed, B-R-E-E-M-I-X-E-D. Keep it casual. Bye.